guy from southwest Wisconsin. I'm proud to say that in the tradition of Wisconsin, you, Travis Clark, had a lot of great players come out of the state. Talk a little bit about your pro career, who you're with this year, and uh, how long you've been around. And you're on a very big guy. Talk about your size and weight. Yeah. Uh, so I started with uh, EWS in 2011 on an A team. And then from there, uh, went to RM. And then for the last six years, I've been with Easton, and we were uh, the Easton major team, so Smash It Sports, uh, Rosmondo. Um, as far as the hitting as a little guy. Um, How big are you? I'm 5'9, uh, 205. Not exaggerated. Not exaggerated. No, 5'9. 5'8 <laughs> without the hair gelled up. <laughs> yeah, 5'10 five, five, with the hair. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's not you don't always have all the power that the big guys have. You don't have that leverage. So it's um, you know you really got to have good swing mechanics and and staying through balls. Your misses don't go as far. So uh, you know it's just uh, a lot of staying the ball and and trying not too hard. I know you got great speed and you're a great defensive player. Where are they playing you at? Uh, this year I'm gonna be playing shortstop for Precision Smash It. Uh, over the last six years. I was the utility guy, I kind of played all, all over the place. I had a year where I started at center, uh, center field, and then a year was short, and then a year at third. So I kind of I played every position except pitcher. And what's your ba background? Where did you go to high school at? I went to high school at Kenosha Tremper, uh, and then I went to college at Wisconsin Parkside Division II. Um, what kind of a career did you have at Parkside in baseball? I had a good career. Um, we, got, uh, we lost in the game to go to the World Series one year. Uh, that was our best year, and then that was the uh, all-time best school record that the college ever had nice. as well. They've had a great program there. Um, any looks to the majors or anything? No, no, that was the dream, but that, that never worked out. What's the big adjustment? And they teach a lot of, Mike Epstein and those guys teach a lot of the inside-out baseball swing, yeah. lift up the front elbow. What changes did you make, and what changes can you give to the rec guys coming out of baseball into slow pitch? Yeah, so it took a little time, actually. When you're playing baseball, you see people playing softball, and you're like, man, this is going to be easy. Um, but it's actually not. you got to actually learn. Uh, it took a couple years to figure out how to get some power. Um, the baseball swing is so short and so quick. And I think with the softball swing, you got to kind of learn that happy medium where you're, you're actually lengthening the swing out a little bit uh, with the timing, but you still have to be quick to the ball. So, um, you know, it's all, almost making your swing a little bit longer, but still staying explosive through the ball. I What's think your go-to base hits? What do you try to attack? My go-to base hit swing has always been the 3-4 hole in between the first and second baseman, or I'll try and go to right center. I think uh, that's a little bit of the baseball background. It's, it's just an easier swing for me. Um, so, or I'll go right off the pitcher either either way if I'm going for. So a base the pitchers hit. try to jam you inside to take that away. Yeah, because it's hard when you're pulling the ball and you, and you don't have any home runs left. You know, after a certain amount of time, you know, it's even for me as a little guy, it's harder to keep the ball in the park when you're pulling the ball. So it's easier to keep it in the park when you're going oppo or staying through the pitcher. Do you find yourself making adjustments as far as uh, where you stand at the plate so you can get that outside pitch more often? Are you up and back? Yeah, I'm up, I'm, up, I'm up on the plate and then I'm back off it a little bit more so I can let it get deep and still hit it over there with some authority. If you move six inches back to he's jamming you and you want to still go backside, do you feel like you can't even move two, three inches in the box without giving away? Or do you feel like if, if you move back in the box, you're messing with them and, you, and if they move, you can always adjust back? What's yeah. the cat and mouse game you play yeah, as far as uh, where you stand? You know, it's at the, at the upper level, guys get a good feeling of where you normally stand and they know where you like to swing. And then they'll also cheat on the pitch. So you really got to start to try and disguise that a little bit. Um, yeah, if I'm backing way off the plate and I'm up on it, the catcher's letting everyone know. Um, so sometimes I might back off, and they're going to try and jam you in when you're doing that. And I might back off knowing he's going to jam me in, and I'm going to pull it down the line. And, uh, it's a little cat and mouse. Yeah, it's, it's, it's cat and mouse, out. yeah. But then, you know, if you're swinging the right way, you can be on the plate and still inside out something over the right side. I just I focus on staying quiet on my front side. I don't have a big stride. Um, I tend to get stuck when I do a big stride, and I'm trying to really hit it far. I find the more fluid I stay and the more quiet I stay on my front, swi front side, I can hit the ball farther. So, it so almost when, you feels a, like, when you take a stride, it's almost like you're reaching it ahead and you're not yeah. committing that weight until your rotation takes right. over? Yeah, I'm not I'm not committing until I'm in the, the good hitting position, until I and I try and stay knob to the ball straight through it. Okay. And so and, and you say knob to the ball straight through it, so you, you drive your hands and knob towards the part of the ball yeah. you want to attack? Yeah. And then, then does it feel like it's just a throwing motion, like you're throwing the bat out of your hands? Or yep. how would you say in your feet? Yeah, it's kind of uh, I'm taking my left hand to the ball and the right hand is just along for the ride. Um, I want to be at contact 
palm up, palm down, there. And then I want to try and stay through it there. And then after contact, then I'm rotating. Through. Take yeah, a couple so dry swings. going to be, it throws it to that point here. But then the hard part is to not come this way with it, and you want to stay through it that way. So I'm actually not a top hand hitter. I try to use the bottom hand so that I can guide it here. And that helps me stay inside the ball, and then I'm through the through the ball with the barrel, and then I come through. That former champion here. What, what was the what was the home run derby one here two years ago at the Space Coast? You know the big boys. What was that? That was the uh, Stars and Stripes. Uh, it was basically a conference home run derby. And you're not a big guy. How big are you? Uh, Our house. Five six, two hundred twenty-five pounds. Do you see a lot of the kids swinging twenty sixes and twenty fives? Even what's your feeling on that? Do you think they're going too light? I think they are. I think they're trying to get bat speed versus uh, more weight will give you better exit velocity, which they don't understand. They're still going with the, the launch angle, with the baseball mentality. So they're thinking bat speed still, but a heavier bat will give you more exit velocity. I always stand with my back foot slightly turned in and load it up on the back leg, so all my weight's on my back. And I do a quick step and then just drive through. With my hands follow, follow everything, just trust them. Well, you, you really got to get your rotation moving because it's all it's all in your hips. That's where most of your power comes from. Your, your legs are all obviously your strongest muscles in your body. So when you, stri when you, you, get, you get the rotation going, you step, but you actually got to push at the same time to get that linear force. I, I, I got my swing. As soon as, as soon as my front foot hits, my hands are starting to come through the ball, and I get that snap of that bat through that ball to uh, generate the power to where I want to put the ball, try to cut it, whatever field I see fit for whatever the pitch is, of course. I'll honestly try my first swing in any any BP tournament, anything, I will actually try to go backside. I will go through the five, six hole left field line to square the one up and get it. Once, once I know I square that first one up, I can do anything I want after that. It, everything else is, anybody can pull the ball. We didn't know that. Pulling a ball, they teach you that from a little while. But learning how to hit backside and through the middle, once you square that first one up through that hole and you hit it where you want to and you get it well, and it's just the confidence is there and you, you, you know everything's right, your mechanics are right, everything's where it needs to be, and you just go hard and go, go from there. What do your friends think about you getting a shot to play some major conference ball last year? Uh, Pretty cool. Pretty cool. It was a very good experience. <laughs> they, they, it was great. They, honestly, good, good people, good teammates. It's a good good program. Everything. Brett Elmer was nothing but, you know, generous with me. He treated me like family. It, it was it was a great experience. That pitcher's releasing the ball, and I'm already and loaded ahead, and ready to go. Like, what that causes me to do, I'm either going to sit on my backside too long, or I'm going to be here ahead of the ball. So to me, I let the ball get almost three quarters of the way. If I could stay calm. Let him release that ball, recognize, like it, love it, it's over. And hit it within that rotation. And hit it and hit it and hit it just fine because I've allowed myself to not fall out of balance. Right. I've allowed myself a shorter amount of time for things to go wrong. So, so to me, if I can let the, when I'm really on and I'm grooving and when that pitcher's releasing the ball, I'm good, good, good until that ball's somewhere in that fence line, and then I can I, I still have plenty of time to go oppo, hit a homer, hit a hole, whatever I want. So so a lot of it is 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 quickness to the ball and letting the ball travel. What, what That's do, my definition of letting the ball travel. And what what we do in our teaching program is is the tempo. You know we, you know we use the term tempo for it, which isn't not anything we made up, but you know it's five percent, five percent on your load up, real nice and easy, and then boom, one hundred percent on your go. So Absolutely. So, and, so I mean, I guess. I'm trying to create a little bit more. So, of so an you angle. can see that bat, that bat is actually doing a, a bit of a tomahawk yeah. and over. And that's and that's my. Yeah. Any more times, I mean, right. You know, you you rotate so fast, you don't want to be way out here. That snap's right. got to come fast. Yeah. I and, think and, and if I'm and it's a fine line of hitting it too far out front and too far deep. Yeah. I mean, there's a fine line in there to, of, of of perfect. But but yeah, I mean, I I really like this. We manipulate almost everything. Almost every ball we hit, we manipulate it. We can pull an outside pitch. We can go oppo on an inside pitch. So, so, so to me, you can't you can't go oppo on an inside pitch if you're letting it get back here. If I'm hitting the ball out here, I can still manipulate my hands to create. You create the, the lag, and then you hit, your, your snap becomes yeah. laid down the point so, of impact. So, and I can't do that back here. I have to do it out here. So, so even when I'm when I'm taking my oppo rounds in batting practice, 
I have to get away from this one. And I gotta get to this one. That's one of my keys in the game is I don't want anybody knowing where I'm hitting the ball. We really um, correlate throwing a fastball to hitting a softball. A lot of the best pitchers, when they're coming through, they're gonna show their ass a little bit and they're gonna come through and they're gonna fire. So what we're trying to duplicate is we're trying to duplicate that feeling here. We're trying to get a little bit of a little bit of hip turn, set the position, and explode off of that. I, I'm a 50-50 guy in the box. When I'm setting up to the pitcher, I like to be 50-50. Because what it, what it allows me to do, it allows me to stay calm first. I'm not locked on a heavy position on my backside. And it allows me to kind of ease into that position. Because I feel like sometimes if I get too locked back here, I start falling into the ball rather than setting my hip angle. So, so it really does help me being here because it allows me to kind of squat into it. Best players and hitters nationally now is senior, 45, Kenny Scobie. And one of the most popular guys at the senior camp here. Um, just awesome to be at camp, and the, and the players really appreciate here what you do for them, Kenny. Appreciate that. Having a good time. The weather's beautiful. Get to meet a lot of dudes I used to know that have come and gone through the camp. So there's like a history there, which is nice. Uh, the camp, Subball Magazine, if you haven't had a chance to come, you need to check it out. The people that are running it have done it for years. Um, you build like a family when you pull up, walk in the gate. Everybody's like, Scobie, what's up? Everybody's happy to see you. Um, and it's a really healthy softball environment. Um, and I really feel like um, if you're challenging somebody to get better at their game, this gives you an opportunity to spend two or three days focusing on you being the best player you could be to go back and help your team. I think that's something that gets overlooked is the opportunity here to actually work with pro players, to work with your buddies, hang out. It's like an adult spring break. You get to go out to nice places to eat, go to the beach. Um, but here you can actually work on your game. So. Um, one thing I want to commend on the camp also as well is the campers that actually come out and talk to pros and be like, uh, Scobie, what can you do to help me with this? Or what do you think I'm doing here? Um, the campers that are approachable, that want help, that reach out for it is the best way to get the help you want. Like you should never leave this camp wishing you worked on something. Um, infield, power, how to get more power, how to make better contact. Um, ask, you gotta ask. So be, be sure to ask if you're a camper. Um, I think my swing's a tad different due to my size is that I rely a lot on wrist, wrist strength and wrist snap. Um, I used to coach high school softball, so fast pitch to me is um, and my passion for that. But in slow, fast pitch softball, there's a lot of snap in your wrist. So to me, I translate that to slow pitch where I gotta generate all that energy into the ball um, doing to be a tad undersized to where I get a lot of wrist snap in there, which causes a lot of exit velocity. Um, my exit velocity is actually pretty solid considering I'm 45 years old, but a lot of that all comes from wrist snap um, and momentum going through the ball. Um, one thing I found out these campers, a lot of them, are, when they go to make contact, is they're hitting it here and then they fall back off the ball or they release early and they're not really getting enough torque through the ball. Um, and I explained to a lot of them, it's like if you're in a fight and you're throwing jabs, um, if you're in a fight and you're just throwing jabs and falling back, you're not doing damage. You need to do damage. It needs to be a Mike Tyson knockout punch every, and attempt to hit as hard as you can hit it. And I think that's one thing campers aren't really realizing the amount of energy that needs to be produced. Sweet Dean Marini's my friends.